What is up guys, my name is Ryan Guy. today we're going to be talking about something that has been highly requested in my channel, and that is a loot guide. So we're going to be talking about all things loot in the Cycle Frontier. We're going to be talking about what is worth looting, uh, where contract items spawn, how the spawns work, uh, the spawn chances of items, and then like, what is worth looting, we're talking about like, weight to value wise, what you should grab and what you shouldn't grab. So hopefully this will help you guys just maximize your profits and knock out those contracts. Now, a quick disclaimer, I any of the graphics I'm going to show you in this video, I did not make myself. These are things that were put together inside of the Cycle Discord that were put there for public use. So I'm going to be putting them together in this video so that you guys may use them. I will link them down in the description, but they are not mine. I did not make them. Hopefully this helps you guys knock out your contracts quickly. And thank you for sticking around, guys. If you enjoy the content, we're going to be doing daily guides here on the channel until the beta ends. So hit that sub button and stick around, guys. Enjoy the content. So I want to hop into the most asked question right away, which is where do my contract items spawn? I always get where do mushrooms spawn? Where do ball bearings spawn? Where does scrap metal spawn? So uh, this map color codes all of the um, all of the different locations on the first map for the Cycle Frontier telling you what faction they belong to, so the different faction structures. So, for example, the dig site, the power plant, the water facility, and the east collection point are Korolev structures. So, what that means is that Korolev items will spawn there. The way that the item spawns work in this game is that certain items are, are associated with certain factions, and those items will spawn in those factions, um, those faction sites. Now, before I hop into this further, with that being said, now that you have this map, you can pretty much figure out what items, where your items will spawn, um, if you know what faction they're associated with. I'm going to put that section right after this, so I'm going to list what spawns where and what's with what uh, faction. If you want to jump to that, you can, but if you want to learn more about spawns, you can stick around right now. But, pretty much, the way that the spawns work is that they are associated with every single faction so they will spawn at their faction's place so you'll get Korolev items at Korolev places and osiris items at osiris places and ica items at ica places it's simple enough right now if you don't have the list or don't want to look at the list um you can always look like in game at who gave you the quest because nine times out of ten if the ica gave you a quest and said um yo i need this item it's at an ica structure most likely right that, that's typically how it works. Now, it's not always like that, but it's typically how it works. The ones where it says, like, gather and collect, those are those are typically how it works. Um, the items do have their own set spawn chances, and there are some items that are not associated with factions at all. We'll dive into that as well in the next section. But just, um, there, that's pretty much the main, like, TLDR of how loot works. There are various locations throughout the map where you can find items that aren't part of a, uh, like, they're not in a faction structure. So, like, for example, there's, like, little houses, like, all around the swamp that can spawn any faction's items. And, like, there's, like, little buildings in between factions that can seem to spawn any items. Now, no one knows exactly how this works yet, but, like, when you're passing through, like, I always think it's worth to loot those little huts in the way, like, through between towns, because you can kind of just get anything there, and it's definitely worth just looking at. Um, I want to hop into exactly what items belong to what factions and so you guys can get the you know get it cracking with how to actually get your contracts done quickly but that should answer the question of where my items spawn let's talk about what items spawn now so this list is going to show you exactly what items are associated with what factions and by knowing this you can say for example need alloys and say okay they belong to the ica so now i can go to any ICA structure and probably find alloys. It's not always guaranteed to be there. They're like they have certain spawn chances obviously So not everything will be there every time But you now know that if I go to X location because it belongs to this faction and that item belongs to that faction that I can go there So the whole list is right here. You can see alloys blue wood data pad miniature reactors all belong to the ICA Compound sheets explosives hydraulic pistons ball bearings, shock absorbers autoloaders Those are core love and so on and so on. The list will be linked down in the description again. And again, I did not get this info. This was in the Discord for free use in the Cycle Discord. Some things that are interesting, though, is Kotec materials actually don't belong to a faction, I believe. I, 
Uh, I found these, like, everywhere, which is interesting. You can find them in different places. Now, something that I want to talk about before we hop into the next section is there are items that don't belong to certain factions at all, like mushrooms, for example. Mushrooms you're going to find in the jungle and in the swamp. Notice how those areas don't belong to a faction either. You, uh, you can also get very uh, interesting, like, random items to spawn in both the jungle and the swamp because they don't belong to a faction. You can kind of get an assortment of things that, like, you wouldn't normally, like, see together. Like, you can, for example, find alloys and ball bearings in the same building next to each other, but you wouldn't really see that in other structures around the map. So, with that being said, if you're trying to get an assortment of items from different factions, you could always hit up the swamp, you could always hit up the uh, the jungle. That's a great thing. And something that I want to talk about when it comes to spawn chances. Now you can see all the spawn chances of the items are listed here. And things like shock absorbers and autoloaders are very hard to get. However, it seems that in higher danger areas that we get better loot. Now, I don't know if that is because of the spawn chances for items is increased or because there are more spawns for items. Now, I'm not sure exactly which one it is, but it does seem that the high loot areas are worth going to because I feel like I get most of my blue and my green like quest items in like high tier areas like the jungle and it's just and like com station too. It it just feels like that's where I get a lot of my stuff and I don't know why that is, but it's definitely worth looking into if you can't find like a certain green or blue item. Maybe hit up one of those areas and see if you get lucky. Um, I will leave this link down in the description, guys. And let us hop down into what is actually worth looting. And we'll talk about price to value and all that. So one thing that I almost forgot to mention was that container loot seems to actually ignore this principle of faction items expo uh, only spawn at faction stations so the best example that i can have of this is if you have the key for the comm station and you open that door those lockers are filled with nothing but compact cpus and optic glasses now if we look on the list optic glass and compact cpus those are osiris materials but the comms tower is an ica structure and same thing with the water facility if you do the puzzle the box seems to uh, very often have a miniature reactor, and this is a core left structure, yet a miniature reactor belongs to the ICA. So it seems that this idea of items spawning inside of their uh, structures is true for loose loot, however, not for container loot. So keep that in mind when looting containers is that you can kind of get things that you need where you don't expect them. So I would definitely be sure to hit, be hitting containers throughout like different areas of the map because that is something that will help you like randomly and dynamically get items that you wouldn't expect. I almost forgot that, but I think it's really important to keep that in mind. The last thing I want to talk about addresses the problem of people telling me that they don't understand what I should be dropping, like what items are better than other items to sell or to keep. Um, my overall opinion on that is you should keep most items that you can because it's really nice to be on contracts and accept the contract turn it in, accept the contract, turn it in, because you have the items already, so I don't like selling stuff, honestly, I think it's easy to make money without selling stuff, like, you can sell, like, junk, uh, obviously, but hold on to as many items as you can, but if you have to choose certain items for others, this chart is great for that, because it actually compares the item's weight to its sell price, so it's sell price divided by weight, and that gives you the effective price per one weight, so it tells you what items are worth more than others, so I guess you could just, like, either refer to this, uh, sometimes to get better at it or you could like you know just get familiar with like what items are really bad and not worth taking so for example strider flash is like one of the worst items in the game when it comes to price per pound so definitely check this list out i will leave this down in the description but this should 100 percent answer the question of what should i drop and what should i keep when i am in a game now that's pretty much the end of the guide, guys. I hope this really clears up questions about looting for you. If you guys have more questions or more guides you want to learn about, I'm going to be making guides all beta. Every single day, new guide. Tell me what you want down in the description. Come to my stream. Let me know what you want to see, guys. We live every single day in the beta, 7 p.m. Eastern. Check out the link down in the description. Thank you guys for hanging out, and I really hope it helps.